CLL um, has changed a lot in the last few years. Um, the evolution of CLL um, has been changed by the new treatments we have available, um, specifically the BTK inhibitors. There's been a shift um, in the paradigm of treatment from you know, conventional chemo and chemo, IV chemotherapy um, combined with immunotherapy to now you know, the availability of oral agents either alone or paired with an additional um, IV immunotherapy. Abrutinib has been around now for a few years. It was the first BTKI, um, first generation, um, and it really changed how physicians treated their patients. It has um, been a very, very favorable overall response rate, um, you know, 86, 87 percent. And now, several years out, with you know, reevaluating the data, patients have still responded at about an 86 percent response rate. Now, that being said, um, most of them continue to only experience grade one and grade two adverse events, but we do know with abrutinib it has a high rate of atrial fibrillation, which has led to a substantial amount of discontinuation in patients um, of the medication, um, as well as high blood pressure. We know that hypertension in abrutinib, while the other AEs remain stable, the hypertension actually gets worse over time, again leading to possible dose reduction or discontinuation by patients. Calibrutinib is one of our second generation BTKIs. Um, it actually has a more selective um, binding to the BTK inhibitor and also has less off-target inhibition of other factors such as EGFR and TEC, which actually proves to be one of its benefits in terms of its safety and its overall better safety profile and tolerance because it doesn't hit other targets um, the same way the first generation BTKI like abrutinib. Specifically rituximab um, plus abrutinib, um, there really was no difference in progression-free survival or overall survival um, and it didn't increase its you know, didn't make the side effects worse or better. Um, this was actually studied in the Alliance trial, which actually compared abrutinib plus rituximab, um, abrutinib monotherapy versus bendamustine rituxin, so conventional chemoimmunotherapy. Um, both the abrutinib rituxin arm and abrutinib monotherapy arm um, were better in terms of progression-free survival and overall response rate when compared to the bendamustine rituxin. Um, however, when the looking at the abrutinib alone versus abrutinib with rituxin, there was like a 1% difference between the two. So really rituxin did not add an additional benefit. Um, you know, abrutinib alone or abrutinib monotherapy would have been sufficient and would have still proved to be superior to chemoimmunotherapy. The ECOG trial looking at young fit patients, which um, compared um, um, FCR, so conventional chemoimmunotherapy, which was the regimen to go to, um, again, for young fit patients, um, being compared to abrutinib and rituxin. Um, actually, um, no surprise, abrutinib and rituxin actually did much better um, in terms of efficacy over FCR, specifically in the higher risk patients. Um, so patients who have, you know, deletion 17P and high risk cytogenetics did not fare well with FCR. So yes, it was thought that giving FCR would produce these durable responses for, you know, eight plus years. However, when you're taking specifically the high risk groups in a young population, they actually benefited significantly um, with the abrutinib rituxan arm versus FCR. Again, changing the landscape, showing that an oral drug paired with the antibody was actually better than giving conventional chemoimmunotherapy, once again, shifting that paradigm. Again, going back to what we spoke to before, um, the FCR versus IR, the ECOG trial, um, looked at younger fit patients, whereas the Alliance trial, which looked at BR versus abrutinib monotherapy versus abrutinib paired with a rituxan, was in the older population. Um, again, the um, abrutinib paired with the anti-CD20 antibody or abrutinib alone was far superior to conventional chemoimmunotherapy. Not that that's not a good option, it's just that with patients that are actually higher risk, we're actually giving them a better treatment option over chemotherapy, which can lead to you know bone marrow suppression for years and other long-term sequelae that you don't have um, as much with the 
you know, oral BTKIs paired with the anti-CD20 antibodies.